When people think about medical research or the research in human metabolism or uh, exercise physiology or medical research in general, they think about what the laboratory life is all about. And my role over the years has really been to change that perspective. You've all got a tremendous amount of technology built in. It's all embedded in you. The technology that is in place, your endogenous technology that's built into your mind, into the magic of the muscle, it's all there. You just have to tap into it. And it's your responsibility to tap into it. A lot of the work we do is out in the field. And it changes from place to place. It could be on the lava fields of Kona. It could be in the forest with the elite wildland firefighter. It could be with the Air Force Special Operations Command Group. So your lab is where you make it. Unfortunately, the direction that most humans go, we migrate to more of a, a process where we have embraced technology on one hand, but on the other hand, we've ignored the endogenous gifts that the muscle has to offer and that we're obligated to maintain. And so that has led to some of the work that we've done. And this prompted us to start a series of projects to look at the upper limits of human energy expenditure and some of the, the upper limits or the ceiling for how much hydration what rigors the body can tolerate. The Ironman is a, is a long day on the lava fields of Kona. Starts with a two and a half mile swim, 112 mile bike ride, and then a, a fun run after that. That's 26.2 miles. So it wasn't enough to just get some of the urine samples from our subjects. We wanted to capture some muscle samples. The problem with, with that is it's really hard to convince these athletes to give up 50 milligrams of muscle tissue uh, right before the biggest race that they've probably ever done and that is the Ironman World Championships in Hawaii. And so I had qualified for that event in 2006, and I thought, what the heck, let's, I'll do it, let's take it from my leg. So we took a muscle biopsy at about four o'clock in the morning right before breakfast. Probably the only guy on the race course that had 75 milligrams of muscle pulled out of his leg right before the race. Uh, but we got another sample right after the race as well in the medical tent. What we learned from this initial study back in 06 was that there is a tremendous potential for humans to expend a dramatic amount of energy. Not that, I mean, people have been doing this race for a number of years, but nobody's measured what the energy demand is. There's estimates and whatever. That amounts to about 9,000 calories in 12 hours. So. If you're familiar at all with the super boring food labels on all the food that you consume, what is it based on? 2,000 calories. You're put together to do so much more than that. And so in a race like this, about 9,000 calories, not to mention the other amounts that you, you deal with the remaining 12 hours, not that there's that much activity after the event. Um, but that's one example. So in 12 hours, the human can expend 9,000 calories or so. Our next step, we decided to go a little bit bigger, and we went to the Western States 100, which is in California. This is a 100-mile race through the mountains. The energy expenditure in this race, the average finish time is right around 24 hours or so, and the energy expenditure is right around 16,000 calories, the highest that's ever been measured in a human. What is the hydration demand? Well, they have lots of problems and issues that they face. They have tremendous radiant heat coming down from above. They have tremendous radiant heat coming up from the pavement. In fact, some of these guys are so convinced that the pavement is so hot that they decide the only place to run is on the white line. Otherwise, their shoes will melt. That's not true. It is quite hot, though, on the pavement, 160, 180 degrees at times. So it's warm. Uh, so they've got heat coming from above and below, but they've also got these horrible demons that just sort of chase them through the whole race, and they say, this is the flat part, go faster. And the problem is, the biggest heat issue that they face are these metabolic demons. Metabolic heat production and dealing with that, especially in this environment, trying to unload that and get rid of that is really hard to do. 
And so the task they have to do is to, is to go very slow, otherwise they'll very easily overheat. Um, but the thing that's impressive about the water demands for this is it is in some people, 100% of all of their body water is lost and put back during the course of this race, which is about 60 hours, 48 to 60 hours. So it's, it's off the charts. It is so much higher than anything out there in the literature as far as a hydration demand, and this is definitely the place uh, to note that. There's no other environment, no other real event on the planet that would cost this much to the human. But the thing is, they can do it. You can do it. It's impressive that, that these guys are doing this thing. So it's not an astronomical task. One of my mentors, Doris Brown Heritage, who is an Olympian and five-time world cross-country champion, to quote that we used to take for granted all the time when we ran with Doris, uh, but the idea here is when you put yourself on the line in a race, you could substitute race with anything uh, and expose yourself to the unknown. You learn great things about yourself that are very exciting. And I think that's the biggest challenge uh, to, for, from me to you, is to take advantage of all the endogenous gifts that have been already put in place. They're already there. They're in the muscle, they're in the brain, they just need a little bit of fostering. <laughs>